All right, so most of my patients know that I'm a big advocate of using heliotherapy or sunlight, particularly in the morning, which is very in vogue right now on the internet, um, for helping people with both TBI, concussion, but also people with autonomic syndromes, which surprises a lot of people. Um, because as you may know, a lot of people that have autonomic problems don't do well in the heat. Now, one of the ways that we kind of work around this is by using light in the morning. Um, where I'm at in Michigan, we try to do that um, before 10 a.m. before, kind of in the range before we hit 30 degrees of the sun being off the horizon. We can talk about why that is later, but one of the things that we can do is we get less UV exposure in the morning, more red light exposure, which is very useful for people with autonomic syndromes. And the heat penetrance is lower. It's not as hot, it's a little cooler, it's easier to tolerate, okay. But secondly, we do want to also have some of the UVA exposure because that UVA exposure is useful, uh, especially when we think about irradiating our bloodstream. And when we're exposed to heat, as you know, our blood tends to pull toward the skin. This is called dermal pooling in a lot of cases, and it's activated uh, locally in the tissue by inducing uh, nitric oxide in the vasculature, it pulls more blood into the skin. If we're somebody that's having a hard time maintaining like adequate blood flow, especially to the brain, when you do like this big 40% pull into your skin, uh, that doesn't feel good. It feels fatiguing, you start to get foggy, it just feels gross. So we have to be able to mitigate that somehow. Again, we talked about morning sun is one way, Another way that we can do it is to take advantage of what exactly that skin is doing. So we wanna radiate the skin, we wanna be in the sun, but what we can do is follow that up with exposure to a cooler temperature. If we expose someone to a cooler temperature following that sun exposure, it allows us to do kind of the opposite effect with pooling into the, into the dermal tissue. It actually pulls blood back into the core and pushes it into the head. There are two really good concepts for that. So if we think about how do we cool people down, easiest way is to just get them in a cooler environment. If that's air conditioning, great. But we find that using water exposure um, has a greater convection rate, so we can, we can cool people down faster and more effectively. And the secondary benefit is if we actually submerge people up to their chest in the water, we get a secondary hydrodynamic effect, meaning when we submerge in the water, if, if, it's, if we're somebody that has a hard time getting blood flow into the head, by being in the water up to our chest, we actually create a hydrostatic effect where the water pushes on our body. And kind of like a toothpaste tube, it pushes that blood up into our head and a lot of people will feel better. So if we use cooler water, it doesn't have to be freezing cold, it doesn't have to be an ice bath, but cooler water, maybe in the you know, sub 60 degree water, and we can gently sink down into that water and be submerged up to our chest, we can, number one, we can cool the skin down, and that cooling of the skin down causes vasoconstriction in the cutaneous um, vasoconstrictors, which pushes blood back into our core and back up to our head. So the coolness helps, but also the hydrostatic pressure helps as well. So between those in that combination of the two, that can help to offset some of the fatigue that people will experience with the dermal pooling when they're exposed to the sun. Uh, we can talk a lot more about why we put people in the sun, especially in the, in the red light um, position of the sun, so where we get more of that red light exposure so we can start to build out uh, their tolerance to the sun, but that's kind of a secondary conversation. This is more for people that are, that are working through it already to understanding that when you're in the sun, you might start to feel a little bit gross, um, but some of the ways that we can counteract that are through cooling the skin again, and especially if we can submerge um, up to our chest and push that blood into the head. The last thing to think about is as you're exiting the pool is to, is to realize that hydrostatic effect is there. So you can feel great sitting in the pool, but if you get up real fast and hop out, remember we're taking that, that nice big uh, corset that's around your whole body and we're just taking it off real fast, which in certain individuals will cause that blood to rush back out of the head and leave you feeling dizzy. So we wanna make sure we do a smooth, kind of slow graded exit. And you might exit into, um, into a recumbent or a semi-recumbent position. We really like the zero gravity chairs as a way to start kind of 
uh, in a recumbent position and then gently work their way back up and then on with the day. So uh, I hope that's helpful. We love the sun. It's summertime. Try to get out in it as much as you can, um, but also having some techniques to be able to offset uh, if you're feeling symptomatic in that period. So hope it helps. Talk to you soon. Thanks.